microphone, your voice is not being projected. So just a reminder of putting your microphone closer to you. So I'm gonna be walking around if you see me making Good morning. 
My name is John Powers. I'm one of the two candidates in this race. And I thought I would open by sharing just briefly what a county supervisor does. We've had Hugh Carson as our supervisor for 32 years. And the county is a board of five people that sits over a four and a half billion dollar budget that largely serves as the social safety net for people who are vulnerable or in need here in Alameda County. I'm somebody who has a very long experience with that set of situations. I'm a former Cleveland House youth who found my first affordable housing in a boarding house in Southern California 25 years ago. And I've been working for the past 25 years in direct services and nonprofit capacities, giving direct assistance to people, helping them leave poverty and homelessness. I began my, that part of my career working as a homeless services advocate, assisting people who were unhoused to access mental health care, nutritional assistance, disability benefits, and housing. I went back to school on a scholarship through the AmeriCorps program, and I became an attorney for people who were unhoused in Chicago. I represent the people in public housing who were being evicted for various allegations of landlord-tenant violations. Did a lot of work on the cross and intersectionality of people who were facing housing insecurity and were also trying to meet socioeconomic needs through income. Income barriers, barriers because of criminal records, barriers because of documentation status. This is the primary work I did for a long period of time. I moved to California to the, the Bay Area about 14 years ago. And here for the last 10 years, I've worked at an organization known as the Alliance for Safety and Justice in downtown Oakland. It's a BIPOC organization of people trying to radically reform the way we think about public safety by centering the victims of crime and those in communities that are underinvested yet over-policed in the center of how we expend and dispense public safety resources. There I help connect people to solutions after the worst thing that may have happened to them has occurred. Victims' compensation programs, housing relocation assistance, and other interventions that give them a pathway to healing and self-sufficiency. For the past eight years, I've also served on the Unreal City Council, three of those years as the city's mayor. And in that capacity, I've been a housing justice leader, passing the highest per capita affordable housing bond in the state's history, which we're using to build housing for foster youth aging out of care, people with families and homeless, and workers and working families. I've done other work on environmental justice, on food security issues, and on transportation and equity programs to assist people who otherwise wouldn't be able to participate meaningfully here in our community. I'm going to be answering some of those other questions more specifically uh, in the coming, I got you, in the coming round, um, rounds of questions, but I'm here today mostly because I'm somebody running for office to help deliver results. I think that the Board of Supervisors should be represented by a person who spent their life's work doing the exact work of the county supervisor in the county's office, and I hope to hear from you by the end of today. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Firstly, thank you to St. Augustine for hosting us, and thank you to the Alameda County Community Food Bank for hosting us. I have been really blessed to be able to partner with the Food Bank uh, with Lakeshore United Methodist Church, for example, delivering meals to our neighbors who are unhoused, as well as to one of my main community partners in Oakland, Oakland Tribe, who works in the San Antonio Park in order to make sure we're delivering food to those who, in the community, food that is accessible to our Latino and our Asian community. So my name is Nikki Fortunato Bass. I am a 27-year resident of Oakland in Alameda County. I'm a working mom. I'm an effective legislator who gets things done in our mission in our community. And I'm running for supervisor because I firmly believe that we need to make sure everyone has access to affordable housing, to accessible health care, and community safety. For the past few years, I have been serving as Oakland's council president. Uh, but before I talk about what I've done and what I hope to do, I want to share that what drives me is my experience as a daughter of immigrants. My parents immigrated from the Philippines as healthcare workers, and they faced discrimination in their workplace. I watched them fight across, uh, against that discrimination. I've also been the victim of violence, and I've really taken those hard, painful experiences to make sure that I, did, I commit myself to organizing. So I've organized with farm workers. I've worked to raise the open minimum wage. I've worked to make sure that we have good jobs here as we develop equitable economic development. Now, on the Oakland City Council, where I served for six years, I've been tackling some of the toughest issues of our times, creating affordable housing, providing economic opportunity, balancing budgets in very complex environments. 
I'm really proud that at the city council, I've been able to make sure that we have $350 million in bond funds. Just in a short period of time, less than two years, we now have over 1,000 units in the pipeline for homeless and working families. I've been able to expand community safety with effective, accountable policing, as well as deeper investments in violence prevention. And in Oakland, I've also been able to make sure we're addressing food and security. Every single year, I work to make sure that SOS Meals on Wheels provides food to our seniors. I've been able to make sure that we are also spending our, our sugar sweetened beverage tax wisely to ensure healthy outcomes. The Board of Supervisors controls a over $4 billion budget, our public health care system, our safety net. We need to make sure we have someone who will represent the needs of Oakland, Berkeley, and our entire district to make sure that everyone is healthy, safe, and housed. Thank you. Um, we have also been able to make 
make sure that we are expanding small grocers' ability to carry fresh food, and, uh, fresh vegetables and produce. And as well, one of the things I'm probably most proud of uh, as a council member is making sure that we partner with trusted community organizations to use our public spaces to deliver fresh food. So at San Antonio Park during COVID, we partnered with Oakland Tribe, both the city and the county, and we created a license agreement to ensure that they could use that very accessible space to make sure that people got fresh produce, including food that's relevant to our Latino and Asian communities, tortillas and shirachi sauce, for example. At the county, I will continue to make sure we partner with the food bank, with CBOs that really know our community to expand access to uh, those programs, and of course, making sure that people have just the security of income. So, addressing the issues of poverty. Thank you. Thank you both. Question number two. Tell us about your understanding of the impact of systemic racism on the health of people with low incomes. Based on that, what must the county do better and how to eliminate the Thank you for this question. Um, I'm proud to have been an advocate, still an advocate for racial justice, because when we look at the fundamental structures of the problems in our society, it stems from racism and deep inequality. And so we have to make sure that we are addressing those issues. Too often, and there's so much data that shows this, the, the communities that are most impacted are communities of color. So when you look at, for example, uh, mortality, when we look at chronic disease, it's oftentimes our most marginalized communities, including our African-American community. Um, one of the things that I'm a proponent of is making sure we address what's called the social determinants of health. Too often, your race, your zip code, your income determine how long you will, how long you will live, even how long your baby will live. And so I'm proud to be endorsed by some of our former healthcare directors, Dr. making sure we're addressing the fundamental issues that point to uh, poverty or unfair health outcomes, including tenant protections, affordable housing, making sure people have access to jobs. Um, and, in excuse me. and in addition to that, we have to make sure we're supporting our community health clinics. Everyone from Asian Services to Bay Wellness, the Native American Health Care Center, Clinica de la Raza, and the new African American Wellness Center. We have to make sure we're working with trusted partners in our community to reach those who are disproportionately, disproportionately impacted by health outcomes. Thank you. This is a much longer answer than the time allows, but several examples of ways in which we need to address racial inequality come back to the very core things that we're talking about already. So housing, right? Housing justice is very disproportionately um, impacts people of color in our communities. We, we have so many people who are being priced out and displaced right now in our communities because we don't have access to affordable housing. That's work I've done. I'm proud to be endorsed by the Housing Action Coalition, a group of people trying to create equitable housing opportunities for people across Alameda County. Environmental justice is also racial justice. So I've served as the chair of the Air District, and there I helped pass the most stringent refinery emissions standard in the United States to remove pollution from the air in San Pablo and Richmond and Venetian and Martinez, where black and brown children are disproportionately living with asthma, missing multiple days of school year, totally altering the trajectory of their educational and employment opportunities. And I believe that Alameda County, as the health steward, has an obligation to really look at how we enforce environmental justice in our communities. As the chair of the, Air, as chair of the Transportation Commission, I initiated our first race and equity action plan. And with it, we recognize the fact that historically transportation agencies have bulldozed Chinatowns, black business districts have put in freeways and large roads that put pollution in communities and take away and deprive communities of their economic opportunity. So with it, we're actually working in hand in hand with community members to decide what is the future of safety in their community look like, what does sustainable marine infrastructure mean for them. And I think one of the biggest things overall is self-determination on this, creating representative spaces for these communities to actually decide for themselves 
what racial justice looks like and telling us what is needed. Right? So in my full-time work, I work at a BIPOC organization. My job is to stand up and stand back, and get elevated and create space for other voices that are historically marginalized. So that when we do work on reentry, we create housing for people coming back from jails, which again are disproportionately black and brown people, despite their population. We need to actually have people at the board of supervisors who have worked in these spaces that can help deliver those solutions.
with an antitrust and co op so that it's permanently affordable. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to our next question. In Kevin's weeks, are you made concerns to many people who are food and housing insecure and or unhoused in our community? How would you use the county's resources to help prevent people from becoming unhoused in the long term while supporting our unhoused community and respecting their dignity? Council Member Cortez. Thank you for this very timely question. So again, I believe housing is a human right. We have to treat everyone with dignity, including our unhoused neighbors. Uh, so, you know, over the course of the time I've been living here in Oakland, and certainly over the course that I've been a council member, I have been kind of able to build relationships with our unhoused community. And that relationship building, whether it's an elected official or our outreach workers or our neighbors, is really important to make sure that we treat people with dignity and then we have to actually understand their situation to get them into housing. And I'm really proud to have been able to do that with the Apple Tennis Courts that was once an encampment, where I was able to help personally get people housed and in a number of other areas. Um, this is, again, an area where creating affordable housing is critical. With the county's resources, because I've been able to ensure that we have resources to create affordable housing, the county has to partner with us on the services side. That is not strong enough. That's why I'm running for supervisor. I want to have a much deeper partnership between both of Berkeley and our cities and the county because it's the county's responsibility to do the outreach, to provide the sanitation, to provide the services around mental health care, supportive services, etc. So in Oakland, for example, we have four homekeeping projects. These are corporate hotels and other types of buildings that can house dozens of unhoused residents in each of those buildings. Four of those are coming online next year, and it's critical that we have a stronger partnership with the county to pair getting people into housing with providing the supportive services that they need. Thank you. Maybe the first question is to prevention, and you can prevent homelessness in a number of ways. Um, one is you can provide enough housing that's affordable to the people in the community who need it. So we passed Measure B1 in the county a number of years ago, affordable housing bond basically sucked up immediately. The demand is so high. Black Panther Apartments over on 7th Street had 7,000 applicants for 79 units. The need is extremely great. And the county is in a financial position where it has bonded successfully in the past and it used its AAA credit rating to do that again. So the first thing I would do is I would again engage in a bonding process because I think we need to make take projects that are in the pipeline that are currently unfunded that could provide much needed housing today. We could put those into construction right away so that we have places to put people Prevent them. I think part of that plan should also include the preservation of housing, as I mentioned in the prior answer, where we actually have to take existing housing stock and make investments in its upkeep so that we don't continue to have people enter the homes and services system. But the question of dignity of people who are housed is a very personal question for me. And so, a piece of the work I've done for a very long time has been doing direct services to thousands of people over the years. And what I would say is this it's really important that we model compassion, first and foremost. Um, I'm very proud of the fact that there was. It was at 1.75 people who were living in a house behind the Emeryville Home Depot on the city border. And I reached out to the former mayor of Oakland and I said, we received money from the state this year to do homeless services, to address homelessness conditions. Will you work with me on this? We hired social workers and we came in and we brought people into housing, 75 people over the course of nine months together. And we took our former rec center in Emeryville in San Pablo and we turned it into housing for 25 families from Oakland who were in line, unable to access shelter through the Family Front Door program. I think one of the biggest things is there has to be governmental partnership. If you want to actually give people dignity and show them support, you have to model compassion. And that's been how I've reduced homelessness by 79% over the last six years in every moment, by modeling compassion and getting voter support for the initiatives that have made housing possible. Thank you. Moving on to our last question before all these questions. How have you been your past four government roles the concern of public safety, both in terms of violent and non-violent crimes, and, and with an equity and justice 
and it addressed the entire continuum of public safety needs. So the primary purpose of that ballot measure is to fund early child education. You won't see the results of public safety immediately when you do that. But what you're doing is you're making an investment in the future of our community's safety. So we subsidize childcare in three cities in the state that runs its own child care center. We subsidize child care for our families and our community. That's important. That's a prevention investment. In my full-time job, I work with crime victims. And the number one thing crime victims all say is they don't want any other person to experience what they experienced. Right? So we have to center the voices of crime victims in the conversation about how we spend public safety money. Why do we go to police certain communities? Why is there a disproportionate number of people who are arrested in jail from some communities over others? And what are we doing to actually resource those communities with things that would be prevention investments, community-based health care centers, after-school programs, job training and programs, for opportunities for people to have a trajectory that is different than the one that we've left behind. And I personally also feel very deeply passionate about the child welfare system. The vast majority of people who end up in San Rita Jail were once the product of our foster care system, which is the county's responsibility. Why do we not provide competent and complete services to young people who are already experiencing one of the worst traumas in their life, being in a system where adults are Adults are needed to care for them, and they don't have that day-to-day -day mentorship and opportunity. We have to intervene there. Those are the things that we have to do. But on the back half of the measure half, the other part of the money we spent was spent ensuring that our police, fire, and first responder services were all sufficiently funded. And I'm proud to be the only candidate in this race endorsed by first responders at EMS and professionals in the public safety space.
around addressing the root causes of hunger, which are poverty and racism. Um, so uh, we invite you all to check out our voter guide. We, uh, it's a labor of love here with the whole team of uh, policy and partnership. Uh, we took a lot of time to analyze this and to make uh, those purposely and intentionally very confusing uh, ballot measures more accessible, more readable, and legible. And then also we just, again, wanted to also thank St. Augustine's, you all, uh, for being here today. I'm not sure if folks know this, but this is the very first uh, church and uh, congregation that after it burned to Trinity Church and a few others, is the very first place that the uh, free breakfast program for the Black Panther Party took place here uh, around this very site here in Oakland, California, back in the 60s. Uh, and then just as a reminder, uh, if you have formerly incarcerated loved ones, as long as they're not incarcerated, they are eligible to go. And if you have 16 year olds, they're allowed to uh, register to go. And by the time they uh, reach 18, uh, they will be able already registered and they'll be able to exercise their uh, right to go. Uh, thank you very much for being here. And if you have any questions, you can come to any of the staff after uh, the, re the registration desk. And just uh, thank you again for all your time. And, uh, give yourselves a round of applause.
Thank you for this question. Um, so I'll highlight a couple things. One is, like I said, I've been an organizer, a coalition builder, an advocate for multiple decades here in the state, 27 years I've been a resident here. And so I bring a lot of community relationships into governing. Um, I have served on a regional level with the Association of uh, Bay Area Governments. That is a regional body that actually has been working to put onto the ballot Prop 5, which I see you are supporting. So thank you for that. That will ensure it is easier for a majority of um, our residents to pass affordable housing laws. That's critically important. And that is something I will continue to work on with that board. I am also on the Youth Ventures Joint Powers Authority. That is a regional governing body that brings together our educational institutions with the city and the county to make sure we are lifting up issues for young people. Um, I am really proud to be endorsed by a set of elected leaders. I won't necessarily name them, but I think what I bring is um, an organizing instinct to make sure that I'm partnering and bringing in the voice of all of you into county office. So few people, as I've been doing, I can even watch three campuses this morning. So few people know what the county does. They don't understand it's our public health care system and our safety net system. If we are successful, we are helping to eliminate poverty. That is so important. And so your voice is really critical in that. And you also need someone who understands the complexities of our largest city, which is Oakland. We have disproportionately been impacted in the region around housing and homelessness, around safety. We need someone who has been working in a tough environment to make sure that we're building regionally around solutions that will help lift up all of us and really bring an equity approach, which I'm proud to say we have in the city of Oakland through having a department of race and equity. Thank you. Thank you. I have very extensive experience working at the county level. I've been the chair of Alameda County's Healthy Homes Board for the last few years, which focuses on removing environmental toxins like lead and other things from the homes and schools of children, which has required me to come to Oakland and Oakland USD to help intervene on the Clients High School and other places where families are really concerned about the health of their loved ones. I've been the chair for the last three years of the Alameda County Transportation Commission, which means I've been elected by the 14 mayors, the five supervisors, and the two transit agency boards to run an organization that spends a half billion dollars a year to increase safety infrastructure investments across Alameda County. And I go to D.C. several times a year with an entourage and a group of people to come and bring back federal money leveraged against Measure BB voter approved money that we get to show and say that voters in Alameda County want these changes. We work with our federal partners to bring funding back. I was the first person in over 30 years to be elected twice to chair the Bay Area Air Quality Management District, which is a nine county, eight million person airship with over a half billion dollar budget that is supposed to remove pollution from the air of our communities and give people safe, clean, breathable spaces to live and thrive. So I've been doing community and regional work, but also my professional job. I partner with the California State Association of Counties, CSAC, the County Welfare Directors Association, which runs the 58 human service agencies that manage and help people in our foster care system, the County Behavioral Directors Association. In my full-time job, I partner with these regional and state leaders to get legislative change in Sacramento to improve the lives of people in poverty or people who've been victims of crime. Right? So I'm proud to be endorsed by community leaders like the former chair of the Black Panther Party, Lane Brown, Ms. Margaret Gordon, who works at the West Oakland Environmental Indicators Project, Donald Frazier, who runs Building Opportunities for Self-Sufficiency for People on Gantry right here in Oakland. These are people who work with me and know that I can do all the work from federal, state, local, to the community.
themselves and they started having to make choices some of them didn't make before. Do I pay my utility bill? Do I pay my rent? Do I feed my children two or three meals a day? Those aren't choices people should make. So in my work, I did something that may make some of you laugh. I did something called Disney at the desk. And I lip sync Disney songs for anyone who would donate to the Alameda County Community Food Bank, $500 more. I raised $29,000 for this food bank in 2020. And I have championed and chaired the Emeryville Citizens Assistance Programs annual gala and fundraised $75,000 a year for that completely volunteer organization made up of faith-going people, ecumenical community members, people who just want to see not just stomachs be fed and nourished, but souls. And I believe in the fact the value of public-private partnership, so I believe the government should help subsidize and fund food and nutritional services, but I also believe that as community members who care, we have an obligation to show up as well to help those among us who need it.
community uh, to make our business tax more progressive or tiered so that if you uh, make more money, you pay more taxes. And that is raising over $17 million a year in new revenue that we can put back into city services. So it's important to have an equity-centered approach, a commitment to public participation, the ability to look very hard at how we are dealing with our expenses, but also how we are raising
said, so I'm not deterred by Jim saying no. So I have a contract and we have a van that comes once a week and picks his, him up with his recyclables and it takes him to Berkeley so he can get money to do what he needs to do it. Because someday if Jim trusts us, he'll say yes. Is anyone upset with what we're doing for Jim? No hands for him. That's a deal. that all of you 
imagine that if you're here today at the Alameda County Community Food Bank at St. Augustine's or St. Augustine, <laughs> you probably have something in common with me, which is you have the heart of a servant, and you've spent most of your life, or sometimes it may just be your Saturday or Sunday, in community with people who are just our brothers and sisters who need care and help. And that's the reason I want to do this office. I really think that somebody who does that work, who stands with you in the food line, who's helped provide housing services to people who are homeless, I think that's the voice that the county needs. I agree that we need to elect a person who understands those complexities. I do. I also think we should elect somebody who gets results, who can house people, who's directly provided services to people fleeing domestic violence, people who've come to this country and are abused or trafficked by other people, people who don't know where they're going to sleep at night, people whose, whose jar of compassion will never run dry. That's really, really important. I'm proud to be endorsed by a very eclectic group of people who represent all the very types of people that we serve. Planned Parenthood gave me your soul endorsement. The Sierra Club 350 Bay Area Action Fund on Climate, the Environmental Justice Community gave me their endorsement. The Housing Action Coalition, both of our assembly members, Mia Bonta and Puppy Wicks, all of our first responders here in our communities gave me their soul endorsement. Right, the community members have given me their endorsement. People who run the food service program right over on San Paulo, their endorsement is very important to me because it's a statement of who I am and what I've done and what I will do. Because that's the work I've been doing. I've been doing that work, and I imagine many of you do as well. We all know that a more just community is possible for us here in Alameda County. And I believe we have the power to vote for change this election. I hope I approve it. Thank you both. I invite the audience to stay connected to one We would also like to